through the chapter myself personally again. I'm trying to see what the Lord would have in it. And I'm like, first read over, eh, not a whole lot going on in there. Read it over again. Yeah, you know, there's a couple things in there. There are times in Charmers, Lord, they like to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. Just get kind of all balled up in it. And... It's okay, man. I'm kind of over trying to get through it. I mean, Sunday morning's a little different, obviously, for the time factor, but it's a little easier time to spend more concentrated focus on, on these verses in the Word of God, so that's why I try to take advantage of Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. I like Sunday nights, a little more, a little more deeper into the Word of God. Uh, not that the preaching is not. Sunday school is very good. Sunday, Sunday school basically is for school, but so is in kind of Sunday night with a little bit of preaching and teaching, and Wednesday night, obviously, uh, more teaching, maybe preaching, and Sunday morning is obviously probably almost all preaching with a little fraction of teaching. So I try to mix it up a little bit, but the Lord's got to be behind the whole thing. I do, I do believe that, but as you get into it on Sunday nights, there's just, uh, I, I can't personally do this, like I said before, and not just have it explode on me. Verse number one says, <clears throat> Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people, for thou hast gone a-whoring from thy God. Thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor. <laughs> What a, what, a, what, a great, what a great phrase. The floor and the wine press shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. They shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord, neither shall they be pleasing unto him. Their sacrifice shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. All that eat thereof shall be polluted for their bread, uh, for their bread, for their soul shall not come into the house." Of the Lord, what will you do in the solemn day and in the day of the feast of the Lord? For lo, they are gone because of destruction. Egypt shall gather them up. Memphis shall bury them. That's a section in in Egypt. It's not down in Tennessee, in case you're wondering. Memphis shall bury them. The pleasant places for their silver, nettles shall possess them. Thorns shall be in their tabernacles. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. First time spiritual occurs in the King James Bible. For the multitude of thine iniquity and, thy great, and the great hatred. The watchman of Ephraim was with... Uh, excuse me, let me reread that the way I read it through and it hit me. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God. But the prophet is a snare of a fowler in all his ways, and hatred in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. But they went to Baal Peor and separated themselves unto that shame. And their abominations were according as they loved. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like, uh, fly away like a bird from the birth. Uh, from the birth and from the womb and from the conception, though they bring up their children, yet will I bereave them that there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe also to them when I depart from them. Thank God for eternal security. <laughs> Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, interesting comparison, is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Give them, O Lord, what wilt thou give? Give them a miscarrying womb. And dry breasts. Uh, there's no way to Greekify that, buddy. And their wickedness is in Gilgal. For there I hated them for the wickedness of their doings. I will drive them out of mine house. I will love them no more. All their princes are revolters. Ephraim is smitten. Their root is dried up. They bear no fruit. Yea, though they bring forth, yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. This is on course to be like Lamentations, man. Verse 17, my God will cast them away because they didn't hearken unto him, and they shall be wanderers among the nations. Father, thank you for the night. What a, what a distressing section of your Bible, Father, but I do appreciate you are 100% true and honest and just to put these things and record even what your, your people did to you when they chased idols. Father, as your New Testament children in the body of Christ, help us to take an examination of the idols in our heart and in our life that we may not though doctrinally suffer the pain of Israel as they actually went through this that 
we wouldn't suffer any of the pain that comes upon a New Testament child of God. But Father, we might walk worthy of the location where we're called, that we might walk in the light as He is in the light. And that, Father, you might be pleased with our service for you. Thank you for our great Savior, our great King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, as the world goes off its hinges at this time of year. We know we have a true risen Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the one with the keys of hell and death on his waist. And Father, I personally cannot wait to see him. And Father, I wait that day with great joy. And Father, I, I pray that you would empower me through the Spirit of God tonight to deliver the book as you would have it delivered. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, a cheerful night with a dreary rain coming down. And a nice, a nice, you know what they should call this hoser chapter 9, Bob. This is, they're getting hosed right now, man. But the, the scary thing about this as you get into the first verse right off the bat is he tells them, I don't want you to rejoice as other people. You say, well, what does that have to do with anything? I'm, I'm glad you asked. You shouldn't be, nor should I rejoice, nor should any people rejoice at sin. You shouldn't be sitting back and saying, oh, this is just a wonderful thing and we got away with it and, well, the, the Lord must have been sleeping on that one and He hasn't caught any of our misdoings and, oh, surely He can put up with a little idolatry in my life and He can put up with a little leaven. I mean, it's not a big deal, right? I mean, He doesn't really notice all that stuff, does He? And I mean, honestly, you just every dog needs a few ticks just to remind him that he's still a dog, right? I mean, that's, just, that's the way it should be, right? You know, you, you, need, you need to go back to the old crew once in a while and spend some time with him and, you know, dredge up the old music and the old gods and all that stuff. You say, how did you get that out of that verse? Inspiration of the Holy Ghost tonight. What they're doing right there is he says, I don't want you cheering on your sin. Do you understand how vile you've become to me, Israel? Do you understand that I view you as a divorced wife, a harlot, a, a, a whore, that you treated me like a punk, and you've gone out and played the prostitute with everybody? Do you understand that that sin brings an unbelievable amount of pain to you, but also to me as your God? And I, I'm telling you right now, you should not rejoice over that sin. You have a world now that all they do is snicker and laugh at sin. I'm sure they've done it since day one, but it's, it's just so much more prevalent and pervasive nowadays when you see it. You know, the dirty jokes and the, uh, the ha 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 and the, he, 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 ha, ha, and the snickering and all that stuff. The Bible calls that as the crackling of thorns under a pot. So is the laughter of the fool. I don't know if you've ever burned, uh, well, bur Kenny, you've burned everything basically on the East Coast. But if you, have you ever burned bramble bushes and briars and thorns? When they get cooking, what do they start doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, cackling at dirty jokes and foolishness and, you know, giving homage to absolute vanity. And God says, why are you rejoicing over that, Israel? I'm telling you, don't rejoice over your sin. Don't be, I, I know there's no sinless perfection down here, but I've used that as a personal excuse just to kind of get away with what I wanted to get away with. And the Lord still is holy and the Lord still is sinless. And he wanted Israel to obey those commandments. And he said, be holy is what? I didn't give you these as a suggestion. Now you say, well, we don't have the Ten Commandments. No, we have all kinds of commandments in Romans 10, uh, uh, 12, 13, and 14, and 15, and a bunch in Galatians, and a bunch of Thessalonians. We have uh, commandments for the New Testament child of God under grace that are not maybe physical, maybe not Sabbath-keeping, but boy, do we have some things that we should look at, and what prevents you from doing that is you chase idols, so don't I. You shouldn't rejoice over that. You shouldn't rejoice over sin. Sin should be dealt with immediately and gotten rid of as quickly as possible. Now look with me over in Proverbs 14. I, oh man, it's going to be a good night, isn't it? Can't you just feel the love? Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Okay, maybe you don't feel the love. Taylor, kill the heat and kill everything. Just turn. No, no. You can, no, leave it on for a while. Uh, Proverbs 14. No, you can leave it on for a while. <laughs> I mean, Deb's got her muck looks on. Her Siberian Huskies are in the back. <laughs> She's like, we got, no, no, you, no, I, don't, I we'll, we'll get a little bit warmer in here. That's funny stuff, man. <laughs> For, why did you marry Bert and come up north? I just wanted to, you should have stayed down in the Carolinas. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Wow. All right, let's do this. Kenny. Oh, and Ession's got the blankie on. Okay, we're in trouble, man. <laughs> Kenny, I need, uh, I need 14 9 and 14 34 of Proverbs, please. 14 9, fool 
wolves make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. And 34, righteous exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Why are you rejoicing, Israel? Why are you happy about this? Why, I don't want you to rejoice as other people. You have no place to rejoice because your sin is a reproach to me. And you just read those two, ver two great verses in Proverbs, by the way, by the wisest man outside of Jesus Christ that ever lived. And he says, you know, fools make a mock at sin. It's a joke. Hey, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, oh man, I had a lot of dates, man. I got drunk, man. I, oh, you should have seen. Oh, man, we were just going wild. Well, say people talk about that stuff too, unfortunately. Say people brag about their sin. They put it on Facebook yes. or Instagram or any other foolishness. And you say, well, that's because you like Dr. Peacock. No, I'm so evil, I didn't need him. He just added more logs to the fire. If my father was alive, my, my earthly father, he would lose his mind at this stuff. You know, my, my father, he, he, looked at a, he looked at a cell phone one time, and he just, he's like, in his hands, he's got huge mechanic hands. He's like punching them. And just, he's like pushing his fingers through it. And it won't work, and he's like, bink! That's the end of that, man. Dad did not invent Facebook. I'm just telling you, Dad didn't invent, he didn't invent the internet like Al Gore. But see, Christians, Christians do and rejoice over their foolishness in other ways. And we make a mock at sin. God doesn't make a mock at sin. You know why I know that? Because he put his son on a cross. You know why I know God hates sin? Because he nailed his son to a cross. In fact, the Bible says he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That's how much God thinks about sin, that he put his only begotten son on a cross. That's much how much he hates it. And then he says in 34, righteousness exalteth a nation. That's not just Israel. That's any nation. I, America's not a Christian nation. But if you could be a righteous nation and do the principles of God's word, I know everybody's not going to get saved in America. You'd have a much better nation than you do now with the sodomites and the weirdos running around and gambling casinos. And, you know, whoever thought of the idea of making weed legal? Yeah. Oh, it increases revenue. It increases dumb people. Yeah. Connecticut needs, doesn't need any more dumb people. Yeah. I mean, I'm on the street. We're in downtown Rockville. It's like a Cheech and Chong movie. I'm blitzed. Paulie's all over. I'm like, why is he giggling? Oh. And then you get the smell of it, and then Justin's over going buying snacks. And I know the whole, the whole witness and crew is high on the street, man. But I mean, who thought it good to legalize prostitution in Nevada? Who thought it good to make gambling a wonderful thing? When most of the people are going in, when you know, you go, I go in the store in the morning, you get, I usually get a thing of almonds, a banana, and I'm good to go on an energy drink. I can, I can live off that, man. And then go run some miles, lift some weights, and then do the same thing the next day. I'm, I'm happy. That's all I need, man. And you go into the store and you go to pick something up, and you got people there. I'm not, I'm not judging them in a condescending way, but you see folks in there who don't have much money at all. You know what they're spending money on? Sigs. And scratches. That's an alliterative message right there, buddy. S Sigs and... I'm going to have to write that one down. Sigs and scratch tickets. I'm going to come up with that, man. He that maketh haste to be rich shall not be held innocent. That's the verse for the lottery. And I'll get the smoking one from the dragon. and I'll, We'll come up with something with that. But I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you, you don't have a whole lot of money. And you're taking your gambling... Because uh, it's legal to do, so you can make money. And then, you know what? I guarantee you, if you won that money, you'd be broke in less than a year because the heart will never change but you sit there and rejoice over that man you hear the conversations about with people at work what they're achieving in life what they want to achieve in life hey did you see this on the internet oh let me show you paula you know for example what they do it's absolutely vile and horrific sin is on tap now in america like it's never been and it's not just in america it's all over the world now folks because of this little thing right here that little internet in your phone. I'm not condemning the internet, go off the wall, but it has brought sin to our doors a lot quicker and a lot easier access than ever before. And God says, why would you rejoice over that? It's filthy. Israel's in that. Why, why do you, you're, you're throwing your kids in the fire and you're happy? Don't rejoice over that, Israel. You're, you're going into captivity and you're rejoicing over this and you won't repent. Horrible situation. Hebrews 3, please. Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3. Didn't mean to get all heavy on it tonight, but I'm reading this through and I'm like, wow. If, if I really hated sin, I would try to eliminate it out of my life a lot harder than I do. 
If I really hated sin the way I preach like I do, I would actually attempt to get it on my life quicker, more succinctly, and more completely than I really do. But you know why? I like it. And you do too. Whatever sin it is, I don't know, the, I don't, I'm not, I don't know anybody's sin. I have no idea. But I know you have it, and you deal with it. But the point is, is that don't rejoice over that. Get rid of that. Because you, know, you know what it does to your heart, man? You know what it does to your mind? We're about to read it. Esteana, if you could, please. Esteana uh, chapter 3. No, Hebrews chapter 3. I need you to get... Uh, Oh, it's a good section. 5 through 13, if you could. Okay, can I hit time out just for a second, please? Would you let me do that? Okay. The, that's why I asked. I want to get, I want to get, I want to get overrun, man. I voted out. The we here is who. Who's the house? What's the end? The tribulation period. Just so we know where we are doctrinally, okay? I'm not saying you can't read Hebrews and get a blessing on it and not get some things pointed directly at you. But you're not a Hebrew in the tribulation period. And you're a different kind of house than the house of Israel. Okay, keep on reading, please. Sorry about that. Untime. Back in the game. Amen. I'm sorry, did you read the last part? Deceitfulness of? Deceitfulness. The uh, reason why I brought you here is this. I understand this is Old Testament. I get it. Um, does anybody remember the provocation? And what started the provocation where God was provoked by Israel? And a bunch of them died in the wilderness? What was, the, what was the, the sin that started this all? Yes, the golden calf and all, but what was really the sin going on? <laughs> Murmuring and discontentment. And he wiped them out. <laughs> they just did a WWE. <laughs> they just gave each other dap in the middle of church because they got it right, man. Oh, wow, man. I was waiting for you to put your decoder rings together like the Wonder, Win, Wonder Twins, man, in the League of Justice, man. But anyway, I, I brought you here because he, he wiped them out from murmuring. But did you see where the murmuring led to? And what did God say at the end of that? The deceitfulness of sin, your heart gets hardened. You, you don't realize it, folks, and I don't realize it like I think I do. I think I, I realize it, but I really don't. You, your heart is either softening towards God or it's hardening towards God. There's no neutrality in this spiritual war. And sin, without a question, will harden your heart. I'd like to say that's not from personal experience, but it is. Sin will harden your heart. It will deaden your, it'll deaden your zeal. It will, it will, it will, it will choke, the, choke the spirit. Not the Holy Spirit. It will just choke your spirit. It will choke your desire for the things of God. It will get you cold. And I'm not even talking about just going, just going off the wall and you know, taking 50 grand out of the bank or 100 grand just going and going wild. I'm talking, it could just be self-esteem or self-pity. It could just be uh, some bitterness that gets in there and then it becomes a root of bitterness and then before you know it, everything's bitter to you. 
And before you know it, you're like the nation of Israel, and you're like, wow, and there is, there's no rejoicing. But yeah, you, re, you rejoice instead, and the Lord says, don't rejoice over that. Get rid of that thing. Because you don't understand how tricky sin is, folks. It'll mess with your heart and your life and your mind. Go with me over to uh, uh, Hebrews 11, please. Hebrews 11. Paulie, can you get uh, Hebrews 11, 24 through 26, please? By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the Lord. Don't ever tell me sin's not pleasurable. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna you're not gonna tell me that. Because the Bible contradicts you. No, the outcome of sin and the reaping of what you sowed in your sin is what makes for a distasteful experience. But let's be honest about it, folks. Sin tastes good going down, man. Sin is pleasurable. That's because we don't see the end of it. And we think, ah, this is no big deal. Just a little bit of sin here. Just a little bit of rebellion here. A little bit of disobedience here. It, you, know what? It, you know what? Everybody does it. Doesn't that come in your heart and mind? Well, you know what? You know what? No. what what's the phrase? Nobody's perfect. Yeah. And we use that as like a badge of, I just go do what I want. And run down the road and keep on going. You don't understand the effect that has on you. Israel didn't understand the effect of that calf, the murmuring, and now where they are in Hosea where God says, you're, you've got a, you're, a, you're a whore. You're a whore to me. Do you understand the impact? You're my, you were my wife. You're a whore. That's what God said about his wife. You're a whore. I'm not the one that cheated. You did. Well, I didn't think it was a big deal. It's only Baal. I mean, it's only Ashtaroth. What's the big what, what could be the big deal about big deal about throwing one or two kids in the fire? It's bad stuff, man. Sin is not a not a pleasant thing. Now, go with me to Job 22. It's a, it's a very, very uplifting message, Job 22. Met, met, with a lot of, uh, met with a lot of cheers from the crowd, Job 22. You know how bad I want to talk about the deep this morning and a bunch of other things, and I'm just chewing the inside of my mouth, but you can't do that, man. The signs of an apostle, I'm like, there ain't no, ah, it's, just, you know, it's okay, man. But now we're in the place, if you wanted a place a good place for the flood between Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2. It's right here. But we're not going to focus on that tonight. Sorry. Sorry for all you blood-sucking vampires on, <laughs> on Jupiter. We have blood-sucking angels on Jupiter. We've got we to try to stick to the, the, the subject for the evening. Um, Mo, I need you to get 9 through 13, please. Okay, I'm not going to say anything. We're going to read the next. There's a, there's a point to these, this next section. Go, uh, Mackenzie, get to Jeremiah 23, please. Jeremiah 23, verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah 23, 23, and verse 24 as well. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Brother Bob, can you get Psalm 73? It's a famous one. Been here many times. Uh, Brother Bob, can you read verses 1 through 13, please, of Psalm 73? Truly God is good to Israel, even such as are of a clean heart, but 
as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is full. Mm -hmm. They are not in trouble as other men, yep. neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them <coughs> with a chain, and has covered them as a garment. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. Ecclesiastes 8. Ecclesiastes 8. Uh, let's do this. Jonathan, Ecclesiastes 8, please. 11 through 13. Ecclesiastes 8, 11 through 13. I know it's, it's going to bust up my whole, my pill crow world, man. I'm telling you. I was reading this going, oh, I don't know. I can't do this, man. But I, I did it. 11 through 13, please. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Wow. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, mm. which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Zephaniah 1. Jennifer, Zephaniah 1. Zephaniah 1, please. Twelve through eighteen. Okay, two seconds. Does anybody know what Lees are? And if somebody says blue jeans, I'm going to come out of this pulpit and go off the wall. Does anybody know what Lees are? It's one of those things you take 30 seconds to explain. Does anybody know what Lees are? It is an older word, without a question. It occurs several times in the King James Bible. Give it a shot. Um, the side of an island that's protected. That would be the leeward side. Yeah, you've been watching too many movies. No, no, the no, no, no. The lee, the lees are actually the dregs or the sediment of a barrel, particularly a wine barrel or a liquor cask. So they they drunk it all down. They're just settled on their lees and they're just hanging around, going, "Does God even? Well, I don't know. Does God do good or does He do evil? I don't know." The lees are the sediment or the. Uh, the, the word, uh, I probably just said it, I'm repeating myself because I got birdism going on right now. It just hit me hard, man. No, uh, uh, the dregs. The, the bo this, you, know, you ever heard the term scraping the bottom of the barrel? That's what the lees are. Isn't that a funny phrase for what Israel's doing to Almighty God right now? Now I'm doing, keep, keep on going, Jennifer. But I mean, Lee, I like the lee words. That's pretty good, man. Are you going to the army now or navy or something? Is that the next? Is that the next career? Tell me. I need to know. This has been bothering me. Yeah, you're showing too much stability right now, and it's freaking me out. I don't. It's just. It's. It's. it's I don't know what to do. I didn't. Herb, Herb's actually been in his job for ten years now. It's freaky, man. There's not many signs for the rapture. Anyway, keep on going, please. Okay, how can you not laugh at that? Anyway, go on, because we're all stupid. And go ahead. And their house is a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hates the great Yes. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The day, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of weakness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, very quickly, doctrinally, where is this at? 
It's the second coming, okay? Tribulation is winding down. Israel's just about, to, I mean, they're bereft of hope. They're just about completely wiped out. There's a remnant left. And then the day of the Lord comes and everybody's like, oh, no, there's the lamb. I thought we killed him. Oh, no, he's alive. And uh, I, would say, I, I don't remember the T-shirt. I think it was a T-shirt years ago. Jesus Christ is coming back, and boy, is he ticked off. It was a phenomenal T-shirt, man. It was awesome. And I'm just, what's that? That's, Mo, make us up, everyone, for everyone in here, man. Polly, extra small. The, uh, and as, but the, the, the point being, it's, you know, that's the difference between the day of the Lord and the second coming. Is I'm looking. I, I, I'm, I'm the day, the the rapture, and the day of the Lord, the second coming. The, that that's our blessed hope is the rapture. The second coming is a horrible day for this world. It's going to be a great day for Israel, but we're we're getting somewhere. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Jennifer. Sorry. And I will bring this rest. But um, real quick, the day of the trumpet here. Sorry, <laughs> verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. I'm sorry. The day of the trumpet. This is how you can get mixed up in Matthew 24 with the trumpet there and the elect from the four corners of the earth and how you put the church in the tribulation period. There's more than one trumpet in the Bible. You need to know the trumpet for the gathering and the, all those stuff. You need to know the, uh, the trumpet for, uh, that was established in, in Jacob's Psalm, uh, was it 81 we read, and then all that stuff. And, and then our, our, and our trump, and our trumpet, and the trump, the sound of the trumpet. So this trumpet, is, it's, it's the alarm, the second coming, and all that stuff. Go ahead, sorry, I will not do that again. Speedy riddance. Uh, real quick in verse 18, neither their gold nor their silver shall be able to deliver them. That's James 5, 1 and 2, right? Go to them now. The, ri the rich, the men that are rich, your, moth, your gold and your moth, they're all cankered and rusted up, man. Not going to help you. You got to take the mark in that time. So the silver and gold talking about. But anyway, my point in taking you here in this verse, we got, we got one more. Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Deb, Psalm 103, 8 through 10, please. Psalm 103, 8 through 10. And then it'll then we'll make us some comments. I, I hope you've picked up a miniature theme going on through these verses. Between Ecclesiastes 8.11 and, and uh, doesn't he dwell in darkness? And he doesn't really... My point is, is that we do sin, and Israel did sin back in Hosea, like God can't see it. Yeah. Oh, pfft. the old man is probably on the other side of the galaxies. He doesn't really care what's going on. Oh, and you know what? I've gotten away with it so many times, he probably did miss it. No, he didn't miss it. He's just kind and merciful and doesn't pull the ripcord every single time I step out of line with him. You, you just read all the verses. What, well, is he dwelling in the thick clouds? Is he up there in a pavilion nobody can see? Can he even see? I mean, I mean, look at all the clouds. He's up so far away. Does he actually see what's going on down here? Israel, does, God doesn't see us playing around with Astaroth and Baal, does he? Oh, yes, he does. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Uh, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. The Lord does know exactly what's going on. Okay, so if he can't behold iniquity, he'll just send some watchers down. Uh, and, and if you're saved, who dwells inside you? You don't think there's kind of a direct line right there every time you grieve the Holy Ghost and you defile the temple of the Holy Ghost? You don't think God knows that, what's going on? It's just because he is so kind, and it, he's not blind or he's not winking at it. It's just he's so kind that he wants you to, he, he's going to give you, the goodness of God's going to, he wants you to repent because he's so good to you. He doesn't just want to whip the tar out of you every time you step out of line. But Israel's gotten to the point, he's watched this for, for literally centuries, and now they're just, they're gone. And he says, don't rejoice over this. Don't, don't make fun of it. Don't be happy that you're in the position you're in. I think a lot of saved folks in our, practically, practically speaking, we get very happy with our sin and, well, no, nothing bad is happening to me. God must approve of it, right? Are you, what kind of sick, perverse God do you serve anyway? You need to know he's just so kind to you and doesn't, doesn't pull the switch off the tree and beat your rear end every time. 
I, I would definitely say this with, with all confidence. God has not given me everything I deserved as a child of God. Dr. Ruckman used to call it the ships that go out in the night laden with sin and foolishness and frivolity and vanity. And those sh they should come back, man, and just absolutely explode at your dock. And many times the Lord lets them come back and they're empty. Or you have crop failure and you don't reap what you sowed. And he allows that crop to fail because he loves you. But he's not a chump. He's either going to deal with it down here, which you and I should hope he does, or he's going to deal with it up there at the judgment seat. Well, judgment seat's not about sin, brother. You're, you're right. I understand. You're, I, I get it. But if you're going to tell me the things done in your body, whether it be good or bad, don't impact your judgment seat appearance, you're crazy. And things done good and bad in your flesh, the bad ones are going to revolve around iniquity and transgression and sin and trespass, disobedience, a disloyalty, being a traitor, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Eight, nine, and ten. It gets better as the, the chapter goes on. <laughs> the Lord is merciful and gracious. Amen. Anger and his mercy. He'll not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. What a great verse. The us there, this whole, this is all a review of the nation of Israel walking through the wilderness from like a Psalm 103 through Psalm 108. He hath not dealt with us according to our iniquities. I'll give you one more. It's not in my notes, but it's an extra. This is what we call bonus time. And of course, it would go to Brother Bert, so Brother Bert gets bonus time. <laughs> Brother Bert gets bonus time. Go to Psalm 130, please. Psalm 130. Psalm 130, Brother Bert, if you can get verses 3 and 4. If thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. <laughs> I, just for me, though, I, I, I committed those to heart a long time ago. And yet you still do stupid things, Dave. Yeah, I know. Isn't it horrible? <coughs> Isn't it horrible? Wouldn't you just like to get saved and go home to glory and not ever do anything against your king? But that's not it, man. It's putting the flesh down, man. And that's, that's a great two verse there. If thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, or Lord, who shall stand? If he just marked down every single thing you thought in your heart, that inner iniquity, who could stand before him? But there's forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest go do it again and again. Somebody's got to correct me. That's not what it says, man. But there's forgiveness with thee, that thou what? Mayest be feared. God doesn't just give out his forgiveness and say, ah, you know what, see you in a few minutes because you're probably going to do it again. He's like, no, you ought to fear me because of my great power, might, and holiness. And confess that thing and leave it. Forsake it. Move on down the road. All right. That was a lot of cheer and goodness. Go to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Oh, man, we get the, the night is young, rain's falling. Where else would you rather be? Psalm 107. You don't have to answer that verbally if you don't want to. <laughs> Psalm 107. Psalm 107. So it's just rough, man. I read this thing through, I'm going, wow. That, that is, that's the detriment of being saved for so long. I don't regret it. I don't, don't regret not trusting the Lord at 17. Wish I'd done it earlier, man. But I think back because of my own foolishness, and at 56 years old, so that means I've been saved 39 years. So... That's two, two, two X and some change. I've been saved more than lost. So have I done more sin as a saved man or as a lost man? I'm not, man, you ought to get saved as early as you can and live for the Lord as early as you can. I look back and go, what a, what a waste of years and time and mind and heart and everything because of what? Chasing something that gave you pleasure for a season? Really? And now you've got to live with the, the regret and the pain of that and the memories of it? Well, what do you think Israel feels like when he says, don't rejoice? <laughs> don't, don't get happy. You, this is not a happy time. 
what you're going through is not, is not good. I'm doing this because I am holy and sinless, and I wanted you to be holy like I'm holy, and you wouldn't do it. Well, now you've got to bear the brunt of my punishment coming down on you for your sin. It's rough stuff, man. There is a time when God says, that's enough. I've had enough. I've, wa I've watched enough, and uh, we're, not, we're not doing this anymore. Time for me to get some corrective measures in your life. Psalm 107. Tay, you up for it? Yeah. This is going to be fun. 31 to 43. Psalm 107, 31 to 43. I kept him in suspense. I just want to hear the pages turn. That's all, man. <laughs> heard a couple, I heard a couple iPads. <laughs> No, go. 30, 31 to 43. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water, a dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And sow the fields, and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesses them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffer not their cattle to decrease. Again, they are minished, and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. <laughs> he poureth contempt upon princes, and causeth them to wander in the wilderness, where there is no life. <laughs> Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh his fit maketh him families like flocks. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. You say why I bring here, because verses 2 and 3 of Hosea 9 talked about the floor and the wine press aren't going to yield any more to them, and the, uh, the new wine fails. That, did you see that section of Scripture, those, those 12 or 13 verses that Taylor just read? What a weird thing. In one or two verses, it's positive. Then in two or three verses, it's negative. Then it's positive again. Say, that's the nation of Israel. I want it to all be positive for you. I don't want to diminish your flocks. I don't want you to have to be hungry. I don't want to turn your fruitful lands into barrenness. I don't want to turn your water springs into dry ground. I want you to have that promised land where the grapes are as big as a stinking basketball, and I want you to have a great time, and I want you to serve me and love me of free will, sacrifice to me. In other words, the point being is that it's supposed to be fruitful and wonderful and a blessing to you, but your sin and iniquity have turned it into an absolute barren wasteland. You should have had the wine, wine floor for your benefit. You should have reaped whenever you wanted to reap. You should have had the whole thing at your disposal. But you know what's kept you from actually reaping the blessings of God? Your sin, your iniquity, and the fact that you're rejoicing over it and not taking it seriously. I, I mean, uh, there's a verse we read it, oh man, it's a long time ago now. Basically, the, the verse says, I'm trying to remember where it is right now, is that your, your iniquity has withholding, withholding my hand of blessing on you. Your iniquity has stopped me from actually allowing you to be the fruitful child of God I want you to be. You wonder why you don't have a lot of witnessing opportunities? Might be some iniquity in your life. You wonder why folks haven't been getting saved? Maybe... Uh, Maybe through you or, or through another saved person or, or maybe your prayer life's a little shallow. Uh, it could be the iniquity in your life. It, it, sh it, it should be a land flowing with milk and honey. And I, my iniquity should not stop the Lord from just busting open the gates and saying, man, we can have fellowship all the time, all the day, any minute, any, any we can have it any time we want, man. But your iniquity has separated I know we use that for lost people, and I know it's the Israel. I know where it's at in Isaiah, but I'm telling you, that, that sin, God, God cannot have fellowship with that man. I know I'm in Christ. I know I'm his child. I have access, all that stuff, where there's something about that fellowship that gets busted because of me, and it dries up. You just read it. It dries up that flowing water brook of the Holy Ghost of God in your life. And Israel says, Pfft. That's a big deal. He's our God. We're his people. We'll do whatever we want. And God's always going to rescue us. Well, not now. Now you're the whore. And now you're divorced from me. Oh, and in case you're wondering what happens in the future after you reject my son, I'm going to put temporary blindness on you. They just don't get it. I just don't get it. It's a wild thing. Go to, now, go to Leviticus. Got to, get, got to get you back into the Old Testament law here. Go to Leviticus 11. Leviticus 11, please. <laughs> T 
Tay got the cold going, huh? Oh, man. Yep. Well, I've warned you about Disney. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Give it, Polly. Preach it, Polly. Preach it. All right, let's do this. And I, I know uh, there's just no way to do this, and we're not going to do it. Uh, Karen, if you can get one through nine. I'm breaking all kinds of pill crow rules tonight, man. It's killing me, man. I'm, I'm actually sweating up here profusely. One through nine, please. I'm, I've, I've read the Coney. That's just, come on, man. In the rocks, also. <laughs> Coney. Those things are phenomenal, man. Oh, you put ice cream in them and you eat them, and during the summer. They have an island down in New Jersey? On the leeward side of the island. <laughs> Jen Cogshaw. Uh, Jen Benoit, excuse me. Navy SEAL. Leeward to side. All right, here we go. Now I got to get that out of my head. It's bad. Go ahead. Now here comes the best part right here, Karen. Go ahead, read this loud, please. Mm -hmm. This is the only time you change your King James while you put bunny there. <laughs> keep, keep, keep on going. Keep on going. Wow. Isn't that wild? Okay, Karen, you feeling okay right now? Okay, that's good girl. Verse, verse, verse number 20, please. Verse number 20. All fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. 29 and 30, please. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. The weasel, <laughs> and the tortoise, and his kind. And the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. Oh. Oh, the mole, definitely, man. Oh, yeah, mole. I, oh, stupid things, man. Okay, quick story time. The, uh, <laughs> Riley, as a baby psycho corgi, used to dig those up and kill them. We got pictures of it. She'd, dig them, she'd root them out with her nose with dirt all over and snuff, you know, like a horse snuff at the wind. She's, second, <laughs> she's a second coming animal. And snuff the dirt out and, and flip that thing out in the ground and stomp them. And kill him. Awesome. We got the pictures to prove it, man. Yeah. Save dog. <laughs> forty-three to forty-nine. Uh, forty-three to forty-seven. Karen, please. There's only real quick. If you're wondering, because I'm psychotic, the only other place moles occurs in the King James Bible is Isaiah two twenty. That's the only two times. It's moles plural mole. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Amen. Amen. Very quickly, Karen, hold on for a minute. Where did he say they were going to be taken captive back into? In Hosea? Egypt. I rescued from Egypt. I don't want you to eat these horrible, abominable, unclean things. What did it say in Hosea? They're at such a stage where their sin and their iniquity and all their, and their idolatry and all that, they're now eating unclean stuff. We'd ne I'd never do that. You have no idea the depravity your sin will take you to if it's left unchecked. 
You don't think there's saved people who have committed murder? You don't think saved people have gotten drunk? You don't think saved people will submit themselves to the most filthy, wicked stuff? Don't ever think that. Shouldn't? You're 100% right. Possible? Yes. Who would have thought Israel would have gone back to eating these things? But in Hosea it says, oh yeah, you're doing it. The land's dried up. The water's dried up. Unfruitfulness is here. And oh, and now, and now you're going to start eating all the unclean stuff I told you not to eat. Because I wanted you to be holy unto me. And part of the dietary laws would make you holy unto me. But you're so far gone, you don't even care what you eat now. Keep on going, please. Now you say, what's the, what's the application of that? What, what did he tell you over in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17? Come out, from among men, come out from among them and be ye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, listen, how many times the Apostle Paul say, us, them. They, we. There should be a godly difference between us as children of God in the lost world. There was supposed to be a godly difference between Israel and the Gentile heathen. It was physical, dress, hair, uh, 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 dietary, the whole nine. That's correct. But for us that are saved, there's supposed to be a big difference. But see what, you know what happens? Sin takes away that difference that's there. And for all our years of our, of our existence, the Independent Fund for Mental Baptists, it was you know, pants, and, and we can't eat this, and we can't go to movies, and we can't dress like this, and all that stuff. And you didn't work on the inner man. You didn't work on helping people where, where the rubber meets the road, what you think about, what you desire, what you lust after. What, and and you, you made rules in the church to constrain people instead of the love of Christ constraining you. And so people said... <laughs> I ain't doing that, man. You know why we don't have we, uh, the church covenant? I know people, I know, you have a church covenant? That's great. Our church covenant is the King James Bible, man. Rightly divided, bro. Yeah. That's the church covenant. Oh, well, we, 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 uh, we, we swear not to go to certain places. The Bible tells you don't, don't go to certain places. Why do I need a covenant on the wall? I got one with my God through Jesus Christ as a New Testament child of God. And he said, this is the law of the beasts, clean and unclean, what you can and can't do. Well, I got the same thing as a child of God, but, you know, it's just good. So you gotta have, a, gotta have a few fleas on you, brother, to let you know you're still a dog. Where did that come from? And this whole thing with the difference between the unclean and the clean, that's gone away now where saved people don't act any different. Then, then, then uh, and again, it's not about the rules, man. There's just no difference. They ought to know you're different. I've, some of you folks have told me about people won't tell dirty jokes around you more. That's not you being a nerd. That's a blessing. Because yeah. it means they've heard something out of your mouth and they've watched your life and the words and the life match and they understand there's something clean about you that is not just ordinary rule keeping and their unclean life. And if they never get saved, at least they'll know there's a prophet among them. Yeah. Or a prophetess, if you will. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the stuff is, is what... And, Go to, go to 1 Corinthians while I'm blurred, be lighting up here. Go to 1 Corinthians, last one of the night, and we'll, we'll shut her down. Got to go build an ark for the rain that's coming. I want to say this as I close out that little section in the Old Testament. Don't tell me you don't rightly divide after reading those passages. Don't tell me, I don't rightly divide. It's always the same from all decades and generations then stop eating lobster. Well, I'm dispensational there. Let me see the collar in the back of your, your, your suit coat or, or your dress-down jeans because you preach in the morning and you're feeling lazy tonight. But I mean, it, no. but you got the tie, though. That's, see, that's a, you're a sneaky little guy. I like that, man. In case you got called on. The, yeah, I get it, man. I get the fleece. I know, I know. But I mean, let, let me see, let me see your, your collar with your label where it says polyester blend in cotton with 1% spandex because we're all overweight. I mean, <laughs> so it stretches, you know, expands. Yeah, you ain't an Old Testament Jew. I don't rightly divide, brother. Men were saved by looking forward to the cross and looking back. Okay, we'll, we'll follow all of it. 
Don't have a gas stove in your house on the Sabbath day either. Yeah, it was, I know, I know. It's, it's me being mean. Good. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we are, we're done with this one. Kenny, how fitting it should come back to your side. You ready, Kenny? Ready. Get it, Kenny. Here we go. 14 through 21. Big section, kid. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Is that in the Pauline epistles? He told you to flee from idolatry in Pauline epistles? Why, he sounds like a mean, old, rule-keeping, Sabbath-keeping, Old Testament Jew. No, he sounds like a saved man who says idols are still wrong in a New Testament Christian's life. Because idols will lead you down to where, though you cannot lose your salvation, you cannot be kicked out of the family of God, you can lose that fellowship and walk with your Savior. And idols are the beginning of it. And then you start eating unclean things, start going with people who are not separate. It's, just, it's not a good thing. Keep on going, please. I speak as to wise men, Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless it is not, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we bring, for we being many, are one bread yep. and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel. After the flesh, yep. are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar? Now, so he's going to use Israel as an ensample, like he started out the chapter, and he says, listen, are they not which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar? What, what, where were they in Hosea? What did they start eating? Mm -hmm. Unclean stuff. So what they were ingesting, they were partakers of, and it... The whole thing is just 100% detestable, abominable, and is, is evil beyond belief. But look how it goes a little further with those sacrifices. What say I then, that the idol is anything for that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Wow. God. Wow. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. <laughs> ye cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Wow. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. How many of you have a pentagram at home? Put it away. You did, you put it away. <laughs> How many I know, Estiana, hey? As Dr. Peacock would say, you married him, stupid. No. <laughs> How many of you have a pentagram at home? I would saw it, probably say nobody. How many of you play with a Ouija board? The, uh, Paul, sorry, looking at you, man. That's how you got your max lift last time. <laughs> I've never seen one in real life. Come on, TV. <laughs> I mean, you say, well, that's the, that's, the, that's the cup of devils, and that's fellowship with devils, playing with that stuff and watching, you know, The Exorcist and Michael Myers and all that foolishness. No, anything that departs from the living God would put you in that category. And I would not that ye have fellowship with devils. So you're either going to have fellowship with the Lord or fellowship with that other, that other guy. You say that's too stringent. It's Pauline epistle, man. He's giving, he's giving you an Old Testament in sample with Israel and the sacrifice on them. And then he says, I don't, and, you know, oh, and the, oh, by the way, Gentiles, that's what they do. I don't want you guys. Because he started out that whole passage with what? Don't get involved in idolatry. Because anything that's an idol is linked to the guy that actually wants to have worship, the devil. Oh, that's so harmless. It's not. It's not. And he starts that whole chapter off in chapter 9, rejoice not. I mean, don't, don't be happy over that stuff. Get rid of it. Uh, the Bible says, uh, he that covereth, uh, 28, 13 of Proverbs, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. And I understand that's Old Testament. I'm fully on board with it. But there's something about saying, Lord, you know what? There's, something, there's an idol in my life. It's got to go. And I, I just want to forsake it. You know what they used to we are We're done. What did Moses do when he came down from the mountain with that calf? And he strawed on the wall. He said, you know, I'm, we're, you know what? Let's take a little walk to the brook of Kidron. 
and let's go take all those idols and let's with David and let's go to the cedar on the old and Kidron. Let's take them down. And let's just crush those idols and throw them in the water, and just be done with it. So I don't have to have fellowship with devils. Pretty interesting, Father. Thank you again for the night. Thank you for your word. It is very sobering to me, Father, as a as your child for a long time, and I have not quite bluntly, Father, I've not served you very well at all. Not not been loyal to you um, at all considering how loyal you've been to me. Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace, knowing that uh, you, you don't just wink at this stuff. You expect your children to take the Bible route, the Holy Ghost route, and to confess these things, forsake them, and get back in fellowship, walk in the light as you're in the light. And pray you'd help us to do that. Consider that we would consider, Father, as your children, washed in the blood, our walk with you, and to make sure that we don't rejoice over our sin or our iniquity, or to have fellowship or communion with devils, Father, or, or to get involved in the unclean and all that stuff. Father, not from a rules or stupid, just external pharisaical stuff, but an inner cleanness and holiness that would be separate unto you. Thank you for these folks, Father. Please watch over us as we go home. Pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.